to an all-new reaction and review. Tonight, guys, I'm taking a look at a sci-fi film from 1986. That movie is America 3000. Now, there's a very special reason why I wanted to review this movie, and that is because uh, I have seen the ending of this movie at least 30 times. When I say that, I mean that it was on the tail end of a very old Betamax tape I had when I when I was a kid. We had long since taped over the movie. I had never gotten to see the movie myself. But I do remember the ending. And, and when I say the ending, I mean like the last 45 seconds of it or so. Where everybody's throwing all of their guns into a big pile and then Bigfoot runs over a hill with a boombox in his hands. No, I am not kidding. No, I am not joking. Uh, in fact, that in fact that was how I found out this movie's title is. I kept doing a search for Bigfoot Boombox until I found the movie. So now I get to try to see if there's any context to this. I want to know how Bigfoot got his hands on that boombox. I'm really curious if the thing has anything to do with the rest of the film. I am genuinely curious. And it is a post-apocalyptic sci-fi film, and those oftentimes prove to be kind of, you know, fun in a, in a really cheesy manner. So hey guys, this thing could very well be an awesome movie, but the only way I'm going to find out is if I shut up and I push play, and I'm going to do that right now. So, without further ado, it's time to kick back, relax, and check out America 3000. Okay, guys, well, I can say this. So far, the the, uh, the movie really isn't making a whole hell of a lot of sense. But you guys can kind of hear the music. So I can tell you this much, at least the soundtrack's good. Kind of hoping that the writing kind of gets better, but at least the soundtrack's pretty good. Okay, I need to say this right now. I want to make this real clear. It's real cute that they opted to create like their own like pseudo version of English for this just just kind of show that that essentially that essentially the US got nuked back to the stone age but you know what the absolute abundance of made up bullshit English in this movie is really starting to get on my goddamn nerves I just want to say that right now Okay, so apparently our our nuclear bunkers were voice activated before the world got nuked got nuked back to the Stone Age. Interesting. Um, I have a question. Why the fuck would our why the hell would our nuclear bunkers be voice you know be be voice activated? That seems incredibly stupid to me. Okay, so this actually wasn't just any old nuclear bunker. This was the president's nuclear bunker. I'd like to clarify, this movie is set in is set in Colorado. So I need to ask, why would the presidential fallout, you know, shelter be in of all places Colorado? I'm really curious now and I don't think the movie is going to answer it, but I want to know why the hell was the presidential fallout shelter in Colorado. I'm really curious now. Alright guys, I'm gonna say this right now. I have completely given up on trying to understand this movie. This movie is obviously not intended to make even the slightest shred of sense. However, at this point, the very least I'm asking for, and this isn't much, I want a reason to care about these about these characters. Because, you know, even because even guys with a story which makes this little sense, I should still be able to give just the slightest shit about at least one of these characters. That's all I'm asking for right now. Alright, this is something which has been bothering me for a long time, I kind of have to ask. So, early on they found one of the toys, Unix, let's just call them fucking Unix and be honest with it, whose name is Amy. Now, not only did they cut off his stuff, they also cut out his tongue. 
So how the hell do they know that his name is Amy? That has been bothering me since the very start of it, and I just kind of thought I'd mention it now because they just said him by name, they, because they just called him by name again. How in the fuck do they know that his name is Amy? I'm really curious. Well, guys, that was America 3000, and I now know the context behind Bigfoot running, you know, with the boombox, and frankly, at this point, I really don't fucking care anymore. Let me shut this movie off. Okay. So, <laughs> before I get into the review, I want to say right now, this thing is quite possibly the most 80s movie I have ever seen. I want to preface that right now. Before I even get into anything else, I have to talk about the hair that is in this movie. The women in this movie all sport one of three hairstyles. Their hair is either that really poofy, like, big hair shit we saw in the 80s, or it is permed within an inch of its life, or it is or it is just incredibly feathered. So they picked the three shittiest hairstyles from the 1980s. Every single woman is sporting one of those three. And about half of the men who aren't in the whole, like, caveman, like, poofed out, like, fro-looking thing are sporting mullets. It's like, guys, the hair in this thing is horrific. I normally don't even talk about hair when covering these just because, well, I'm not exactly an expert. But still, the hair in this goddamn thing is an absolute laughable disaster. Now, now that I've gotten that out of, out of the way, let's talk about the movie. Let's talk about writing. Now, I understand when you are writing a sci-fi or a fantasy movie, oftentimes you want to create you want to create terminology which is going to be unique to your series or your movie or your book. And I am all for that. All right, I am all for creating, you know, a couple of terms which are going to be unique to your stuff because it kind of sort of helps set set the set the tone for your world. Now, there is a difference between creating, you know, a, you know, like couple of terms and creating almost an entirely new, you know, language which uses English as a pseudo base, because that's what we have for America 3000. We have tons and tons of words in the English language, regular words that you and I would have, that, that you and I use on a daily basis, have been replaced with about 15 words. Certain words have two, three, four meanings to them, and it, it's gonna take you a while to figure out what most of them mean. All right, I'm going. I'm I'm going to give you a really good good example here. It took me almost an hour to finally fully comprehend what the fuck they meant every single time that they used cold in a sentence. Uh, cold uh, basically is anything bad, evil, or dead. Okay, so that's it. Mind you, I am saying dead as opposed to being killed, because you are not killed in the world of America 3000, you are nuked, which also counts if you're stabbed or if you're strangled, you're still nuked. Thus is the language of this movie. Um, and they also occasionally use hot, which I'm just going to assume is going to be the opposite of cold. So basically, where cold is dead, evil, or bad, I'm going to assume that hot is good, or alive. I'm going to just sort of pretend that makes sense because they really don't use hot as often as they use cold. Um, <laughs> but there is one. I am still trying. I, I, I really have a whole lot of it figured out. Granted, it took me almost the whole fucking movie to figure out to figure out what almost all these terms meant. But uh, there is there is one that is used like three fucking times. And I want the writers to attempt to explain to me what the hell they were shooting for with it. And it's any time a character uses the word plastic. I know what plastic is. I'm going to assume you guys know what plastic is. I want to know what the fuck plastic is in the world of America 3000, because I still have no fucking clue. In fact, there actually are a couple other terms, but plastic is the one that bothers me the most because, it, because it's used a few times and it stands out so much. Oh, man. And really, that right there is, that there's like the biggest issue with all of this is this horrible, horrible slang which they tried to work into this movie. Because I, I, I totally understand, guys, I'm going to be like jumping around a little bit, but really, there are, there are points in... 
the acting where, 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 where the actors are basically just giving incredibly dead or dead or wooden readings of these lines. And that's partially because when you hand a fucking actor something which borders, which you give them something which borders on gibberish, you cannot expect something decent from them. That is a huge rule, okay? So yeah, guys, the, uh, so yeah, guys, the, you know, dialogue here is so fucking terrible that it actually hinders the acting, uh, which is never a good thing. Also, the very fact that it's going to take multiple viewings for, for, for the viewer to understand what the fuck you're trying to say, that also is a huge negative. Now, beyond, now beyond the copious amounts of idiotic slang that gets just, you know, like tossed around here, uh, the, the actual story here is kind of decent. I am not about to say that it's good. I'm not about to say it's great. But it certainly works for what is here. Now, not only do we have a halfway decent story, uh, but we also have attempts at, at, you know, humor. And once more, when, once more when, you know, when, you know, the dialogue isn't being just drowned in this ocean of bullshit terminology, the humor actually kind of comes out and it shines. Mind you, the humor here is not funny. But it is, but it actually is kind of sort of witty, and it and it is going to make you smile, and that really is about the best that the humor in this thing is go is going to do is it's going to make you smile. Uh, so we do have that um, dialogue here once more, once more when it isn't just drowning in this ocean of gibberish uh, is fairly decent okay so yeah we have like dialogue which is you know pretty good within fucking reasons uh you know it's like everything here kind of works and it would have worked a hell of a lot better if we didn't have so much stupid terminology just basically just basically strangling the life out out of the dialogue and out of this story and uh and I stated this earlier. The acting, the acting occasionally suffers because the actors have no, probably had no goddamn clue what the hell you know they were saying, and thus they couldn't give a proper reading for these lines. However, though, when they aren't handed handed gibberish to speak, the acting here is the acting here is pretty good. Once more, you know the acting isn't you know fantastic, but the acting is still at least good enough where you can totally you know where you can totally get you know into these actors. Now, granted, again, also the uh, the horrible dialogue also leads to le leads to where I don't care about any of these characters. I might again after a second viewing, and I finally fully understand what the fuck is being said here. But still, you know, the acting here though is trying, and the actors are trying their absolute hardest to make you know this script work. So I honestly have to grant them points there. So. Um, Special effects. There really are not a whole lot of special effects. First of all, we have a shit ton of like bombs and everything else, and all of that is late in late in the film, and all of that is just your like usual fucking like pyro. It really isn't a huge deal. Uh, really, guys, when it comes to special effects, the only things we really have is the makeup on Bigfoot. And I really have to say this, Bigfoot's name is, uh, well, Bigfoot's name is Arg. And Arg is a mutant. Apparently, um, apparently, when the U.S. was nuked by the Soviets, uh, once more, sh once more showing you exactly how fucking 80s this movie is, U.S. was nuked by the Soviets. Um, Arg was originally a human being and was then mutated in the blast. Which, yes, guys, the big big lesson here is that if is that if there is, is that if there are nukes coming, stand perfectly, just stand fucking like outside, and you will just become like a Bigfoot mutant thing. You learn something new every day. Anyway, <laughs> um. So we have so we have the suit and the makeup on Arg and the suit and the suit looks really good until you look at the face. The face at least in close up is an absolute disaster. It looks ugly, it looks cheap. And really guys, a whole lot of the humor is coming mostly from Arg. It's coming mostly from our Bigfoot character because when you see him with, because when you see him with a, because when you see him with a helmet on, it just looks kind of funny because, well, you know, at one point in this big, big battle, he's just kind of sort of standing off to the side and then he just goes and like throws on a helmet. It looks, it looks, you know, kind of, it looks, you know, kind of cute and funny. But anyway, uh, Arg, Arg though is for, is for the most part a background character, really doesn't serve any fucking purpose at all. Um, 
But still, he looks decent as long as as long as they don't do close-ups of his face, which sadly they do. But it's not that bad. Um, music. <laughs> Once more, I do have to say that this that this movie is incredibly '80s, and I loved I loved both the soundtrack and I loved the score because again, I'm really into '80s you know rock, and that is what this entire film's score is. It is the score and the soundtrack. It is awesome shit. I'm going to have to find these songs and, you know, download them as soon as I'm done filming here because they were just that fucking good. Now, I totally understand that that isn't, you know, going to be everybody's, you know, thing, but I really liked it. So I do have to say that if that if you're a fan of 80s rock, you are going to love the music in this thing. And 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 if nothing else, you are going to love the music, okay? I do have to say that. Camera work here is really good. The lighting here is really good. The sets, the sets look fantastic. It really does kind of set a nice, you know, like it really sets a nice like post-apocalyptic setting. Now, when all is said and done, am I able to recommend America 3, you know, 1000? Oh, God. Um, sure. I totally think that you guys should go and check it out. In fact, uh, I found out, uh, I found out, you know, after, after somebody sent it in off of the Amazon wish list that the damn thing is sitting on YouTube right now. If you guys want, you, you can go and look it up. And uh, go right ahead and attempt to figure out what the fuck is being said through most of the movie. Hopefully you will have better goddamn luck than me. So, yeah, guys, by all means, check it out. Um, I do have to warn you, though, that fucking, you know, dialogue is one of the biggest... It's one of the biggest car wrecks in the history of writing. You have been warned. However, though, if you're able to look past that, or if you're on, like, your second or third viewing, there might actually be something here. I don't know. I might actually be... I might actually be able to tell you if... If I... If I ever build up the fucking nerve to give this thing a second watch. Uh, <coughs> Now, I stated this earlier, America 3 3000 came off of the Amazon wish list. It actually came as part of this actually came as part of this like four movie pack. The person who sent it in is a YouTuber by the name of Zula Shake 100. You can find his YouTube channel at youtubecom user Zula Shake 100 and uh, Zula, thank you. Uh, because once more, this this movie, the ending haunted me for years, and when I say haunted me, I mean I wanted to know what the fuck the title of it was, and my dad had no idea, and my mom had no idea, but one of them taped it in the first place. They didn't know the title, so for years and years of hunting and and just trying to find it, I find I I I, find, I finally found it out, and you sent it in, and I watched it. It is it really could have been a hell of a lot better, but frankly, it also could have been a shit ton worse. And I thank you for giving me the you know chance to actually watch it. Once more, that YouTube channel is youtubecom slash user slash ZulaShake100. Please, guys, head over there and check out check out anything he has, and if and if you like what you see, please sub him. As for me. There is one movie on this four pack that I cannot review because I've seen it, and that is, and that movie is Arena. I'm gonna go watch this because I fucking love Arena. So yes, guys. With that, we come to the. Oh, by the way, also Zula, thank you also because now I have because I now have Arena on DVD. You sir are fucking awesome. Yes, guys. With that, we come to the close of another reaction and review. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care, and I will see you all in the near future. Base.